be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, click the bell icon to be notified when we upload new videos. Hi everyone, this is Frank Volz, and it is a pleasure to be with you for my workshop called I Am Root. I especially wanted to thank Denise and Michael Grepverben of The Harp Gathering, and I want to thank the sponsor, who is a friend of The Harp Gathering, and she is dedicating this workshop in loving memory of Louise Trotter. Louise Trotter was a very dear friend of mine, and I am honored to be remembered with her. Let's get back to I Am Root. Now, last year, I presented a workshop on invaluable inversions, and we talked about all the different inversions that are involved with chords, but we want to break it down and concentrate only on a root position chord. Root is very, very simple. It is nothing more than placing three, two, one on the harp, placing every other string. So my third finger is gonna be on middle C, my second finger is gonna be on E, and my thumb's gonna be on G. Now the beauty of a root position chord is the fact that whatever the bottom note is, that's the name of the chord. So if I play a chord, a root position chord, and my bottom finger is on C, that means it's a C chord. If I play an F on the bottom, then it's an F chord. So I've got a C chord, a D chord, an E chord, an F chord, a G chord, an A chord, a B chord, and a C chord. We're not gonna get into all the majors and minors and diminished, or we don't really care about that. We just care about the hand position. It's very important that we learn the hand position and that we're comfortable with the hand position. I could play a root position chord on the air harp because I know where my fingers are going. So, if I'm going to look at the very first exercise in our training materials, I see that the first two measures are going up the scale with the left hand in root position. So we start on a C, C, then D, then E, then F, then G, then A, then B, then C. Then it picks up with my right hand in the third measure, go doing exactly the same thing. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's that simple. And my hand is always in that position. Both hands are always in that position. Would you like to grab your harp and do it with me? Here we go. I'm going to take it at that tempo. I'm not going to speed it up. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. C, D, E, F, G, get ready with the right hand, B, C, keep the tempo, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Very, very simple. Very simple. Now we're going to do the same exercise, and this time when we get all the way up at the top, we're going to come all the way down, and we're going to swap hands in the middle on that C chord. You'll be able to do it. Here we go. Same tempo. Ready, play. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Switch it out. C, D, E, F, G, A. Repeat C at the top. C coming down. B, A, G, F, E. Get ready to switch your hands. C, same chord. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. That wasn't difficult at all, was it? No. We're going to do it one more time just to make sure everyone has an opportunity to get it right. Here we go. Same tempo. Ready. Play. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Switch your hands. C, D, E, F, 
G, A, B, repeat at the top, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, Re change your hands, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Very simple. And what makes it easy is the fact that your hand, both hands stay in the same position and they never change. It just moves up or it moves down the same position. Now let's look at the second exercise. The second exercise is blocked chords. It looks like the same exercise as exercise one, except what do you notice? You notice that the stems are going in a different direction. So the first chord is played with your left hand. The second chord is played with your right hand. And then, so it's gonna be alternate left, right, left, right, left, right. So I'm gonna play left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Switch it out. Now, that's the same exercise, but it makes you use a different part of your brain because you have to think, uh, what hand am I using? And you have to think, oh dear, what's the hand position? And you have to think in a different way. And that's a good thing because we are solidifying in our minds everything about root position. So let's do it again. Left hand, right hand, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay, now. We're gonna take that exercise and we're gonna go up and we're gonna come down. So we're gonna repeat at the top with the right hand because we're ending with the right hand. So we're gonna start with the right hand coming down. Here we go from the beginning of the second exercise. Ready, go. Repeat right hand at the top, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Repeat with the right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Now, if that was challenging for you, you need to practice that. You've got these training materials in hard copy and you can put them on your on your music stand and you can practice them and get really good at moving around with your hand and using the root position. Now let's look at exercise three. We're looking at blocked chords and we're looking at patterns. If I'm, we're going to analyze that, let's just look at the very first measure. I'm going left hand, right hand, left hand. Just the first measure. Now, since I'm playing a C chord, my eyeball is looking at my third finger and staring at the red string. So that when my left hand comes up over my right hand, I know exactly where I'm going because I'm looking for the C string and I know that my third finger is gonna go there. So it's gonna be three on, three, three on C red, three on C red, three on C red, three on C red. that a few times just so that we get comfortable with it. One, two, ready, just that. Good, 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 good. Okay, so now we're going to look at that, the next four bars, which is a chord progression, and that's going to be C, F, G, C. So I'm going to go from the C. Remember, the bottom note is the name of the chord. So I'm going to go from a C to an F to a G back down to a C. But I'm going to use that pattern. So it's going to be C, 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 F, 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 G, 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 back down to C. 
Let's do it again and repeat. C, C, F, 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 G, 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 back down to C. Okay, now the next two exercises, or I should say the third and the, the fourth and the fifth line of this workshop, you would play the fourth line if you have a small harp, and you would play the bottom line if you had a large harp, because, because the bottom line goes into a, a larger section of the harp. So we're going to play a one, six, two, five progression. One is C, six is A, two is, yep, D, and a five is G. This is the most common chord progression in pop music. One, six, two, five. One, six, two, five. Just do this with me. One, up to six, down to two, up to five, down to once, up to six, down to two, up to five, down to one, up to six, down to two, up to five. And what do you notice? You notice that there's a pendulum effect to this. You go down, then you go up, then you go down, then you go up, then you go down, then you go up, then you go down, then you go up. But one, six, two, five can go the opposite direction, but stays in the pendulum. So I'm going to go from a one chord, which is C, down to A. Instead of going up, I'm going to go down. Then I'm going to go up to D, down to G, up to C, down to A, up to D, down to G, up to C, down to A, up to D, down to G. So it's up to you to decide, have I got enough strings to do the fourth line or do I have enough strings to do the fifth line? And they're going to sound the same. They're just going to be in a different register. So I'm going to go ahead and play the fourth line just so that everybody can hear it. And everybody go ahead and play along with me. If you have a 36 string harp, you should not have any problem with either the fourth or the fifth line. If you have a small harp, you're going to want to stay with the fourth line. So here we go. And I'm going to play that same pattern. But now I'm going to use one, six, two, five. I'm going to go up, then down, then up, then down, then up. Here we go. One, two, ready, and C, up to A, down to D, up to G, back down to C, repeat it. C, up to A, down to D, and up to G, and end with a C chord. Now, some of us, because we are in a small harp, have to repeat that exercise. But those of you who have a larger harp, we're going to do line, the fifth line, and that's going to go like this. Instead of going up, then down, we're going down, then up. Here we go. One, two, ready, and C, down to A, up to D, down to G, up to C, repeat, down to A, up to D, down to G. Okay, now we have played everything in blocked position. We've played everything in blocked position. While we're here, one last thing that isn't on the sheet. We're going to play all six fingers at once. We are going to place all six fingers at once. We're going to pinch all six fingers at once and we're going to play them all at once. Here we go. So it's going to be place all six, pinch, play. Do it on C again, grab all six, pinch, play. Now we're going to go up the scale 
And when we get to the top, we're going to repeat the note at the top and we're going to come down. Here we go. One, not too fast. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Repeat at the top. Some of us got a little confused, but let me give you the tip, the trick on how to do this. Follow your third finger. Follow your third finger. Your third finger is going up the scale, la 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 la, and your and the other fingers are just following along because we've been in the root position all the time. Here we go again, starting with C, going up and coming back down. One, two. Ready, play. One, two, E, F, G, A, B. Third finger on C, repeat C. Third on B, third on A, third on G, third on F. Once you look at it, once you think, well, what finger am I using? You don't really need to think about, well, what notes am, am I playing? Because you're in the same position. That's the beauty of the harp. You're, it's, it's very much a pattern instrument. It's a position instrument. Once we are in that root position, we can, we can do anything in root position all over the harp. So let's do it one more time. One, two, ready, and play. C. So that's pretty much it for blocked chords. Now we're going to take that same hand position, that same root position, and we are going to play broken chords. And it's going to be three, two, one. Three, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one. Very simple. So I'm in the same hand position, looking at page two, at the very top line, I'm playing triplets, triplet, moving up one string, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's all there is to it. I'm doing the same exercise that we did before, except now I'm breaking it up, breaking it into broken chords. So let's do it together. Triple it two, here we go. G. them as soon as you can. B, C. And look at the next line. It's broken chords descending. So we're going to do the same thing going down. So this time, rather than following your third finger, what are we going to do? We're going to follow our thumb. So it's going to be, and we're going to start with the right hand coming down. So it's, so it's kind of like cascading arpeggios down, descending. Take those two exercises and put them together. One, two, triple, let go. Repeat at the top. Okay, that is a medium tempo. 
if you need to go slower, when you practice this on your own, go slower. Place all three. Or if this isn't very challenging and you want to make it challenging, you know what to do. Speed it up. Okay, I sped it up, but I went the same direction. Let me go in opposite, go one direction going up and the opposite direction coming down. I'm gonna lead with my thumb, thumb. Some of you may find it easier going up three two one three two one three two one three two one, and some of you may find it easier to go one two three one two three one two three one two three one two three. But what's important is that whichever one is your weak hand, that's the one you need to work on, so that both hands have the same amount of strength, the same agility, and the same. And it's like you can do you can do both easily just just as easy one hand is just as easy as the other that's what i'm trying to say so going up coming down should be the same okay so you get the idea now let's look at exercise six broken chords in patterns i see that we have a one six two five one, six, two, five, and now up an octave. Up. One, six, two, five. But notice that this is an ascending, an ascending chord, an ascending broken chord. And so I'm looking at my third finger, and what chords am I looking at? One, six, two, five is going to be C, A, D, G, C, A, D, G. So your third finger is going to tell you where to go. Down to D, up to G, up to C, up to A. Repeat the whole exercise. Start down on C, up to A, down to D. Now we're going to do it up an octave. C, up to A, down to D, up to G. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope so. Okay, if that's tricky, what makes it tricky is I'm all over the harp and I'm moving all over the place. That's something that as harpists, we need to learn how to do. And this exercise is gonna help us do it. Let's do it one more time. C, A, D, G. C, A, D, G. Up, up an octave, C, up to A. down where we started, up to A, down to D, up to G, come up an octave, C, up to A, down to D, up to G. Make sense? Okay, so now we're going to work on broken chords using the root position only and we're going to do arpeggios. Now, the way exercise seven is written, it is written 
for a larger heart. Let me demonstrate what, we, what you would do if you had a small heart. Look at exercise seven and move everything up an octave. Right now it's written here. That's the way it's written. What I want you to do if you have a small harp is move up an octave and the last triplet is going to be a quarter note. So it's going to be triplet, 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 bing, triplet, triplet, triplet. Okay, at some point you're going to run out of notes if you're on a small harp. Everybody's different. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You just know that when you get to the top string, you're done. Okay. But for those of you who have big harps with lots of strings, we are going to do this whole exercise and we are pretty much going to use the extremity of a 36 string harp. So we're going to start way down in the bass, third finger. And remember, we're going up. We are ascending, so we are always going to follow the third finger. The third finger is like our driver. We're not using our thumb as our driver this time. Our, we're using our third finger. So it's going to be triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And it's going to be hand over hand over hand. Down to D. Up to E. Up to F. Up to G, up to A, up to B, up to C. That's it. That's for, that is exercise seven. Let's do it one more time. If you're starting down here, start down here. If you have a small harp, start up here. C below left hand. The third finger is on C below middle C. If you've got a larger harp, you're an octave lower and you're two C's below middle C. Okay, so let's try the exercise again. I'll take it a little slower just to make sure everybody gets a chance to do it right. Here we go. Triple it to here we go. Triple it. Now I'm gonna move to the D. Left hand is going to move to the E. Now left hand moves to F. Up to G. Up to A. Up to B. Now, this is an exercise that you should learn to do slowly at a moderate tempo and quickly because this is the basics of an arpeggio. able to do that because I was watching my third finger, watching my third finger and watching it move up one string at a time until I got to, until I got to the top. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now I want us to apply this to a, everything that we've learned on these two pages. I want us to apply to a piece of music, but in order to do that, we need to change keys. We need to move levers. So I want us to change from the key of C to the key of D. In order to do that, I'm going to sharp my F's and my C's. I'm sharpening all of my F's and my C's, and you're sharpening all of your F's and your C's. Yes, you are. Okay, now on page three, you have just a bunch of alphabets. You have an alphabet list. D, A, B, F, G, D, G, D, 
D-A-B-F G-D-G-A. So I am going to play. Now, if I'm on a small harp, this is what I want you to do. Like, let's just pr practice the D. Triple and triple it. So it's going to be triple and triple it, half note. And you're going to grab, grab that last note with your second finger. Again. Triple and triple and half note. Then we're going to go down to A. Triple and triple and half note up to B. Down to F. Up to G. Up to D. Down to G. Up to A. Well, I wonder what the name of that piece could be. Well, I'm not going to tell you just yet. I am going to give you another rhythm to think about. We were playing seven notes. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes. And it was triple and triple and half note. Now we're going to go eighth, 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 eighth quarter. Eighth, 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 eighth quarter and eighth, 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 eighth quarter and four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now, some of you are going to like it the first way we did it with triplets, and some of you are gonna like it the way we did it with eighth notes. So let me show you again the eighth notes. The, uh, the triplets was triple and triple and half note. Say it with me. Triple and triple and half note. Triple and triple and half note. That's the way you wanna play it. Or maybe you wanna play it Eighth, 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 eighth quarter. Eighth, 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 eighth quarter. Eighth, 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 eighth quarter. I like the second one with the eighth notes. a small harp that's pretty much all you can do with this but if you have a big harp you can do all kinds of really cool crazy stuff we could do that arpeggio that that four octave arpeggio with this chord progression and it's going to sound really nice is the fact that all you had to think about was D-A-B-F-G-D-G-A. Let me say it again. D-A-B-F-G-D-G-A. All, that's all I was thinking about the whole time. Now, I played a ton of notes. I played a ton of notes in that. But what was I thinking about? I was thinking about the D, then the A then the B, then the F, and then and my fingers just fell into the right places. It was wonderful. So let's do it one more time, and I'll slow it down a little bit. Triple it two, here we go.
we're gonna do it one more time, and this time I'm gonna say the the note. D D D D A A A B F G. What comes next is D. Next is G. Next is A. Then how do we end it? With a D. Second finger over the top. So now you have an arrangement of Canon and D by Pachelbel that you could use at a wedding or you could use at church or you could use for any occasion and you don't even have to think about the notes on the harp. All you have to do is think about where do I start and what do I do? And what you do is all related to root position. So I hope you've enjoyed this workshop. I've enjoyed it. And I hope that you take these training materials and you use them in your warm ups and you use them in your playing. And I hope that your Canon ND is gorgeous. Thank you so much for being with me. Bye bye.